grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and from our Lord, who is the Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Follow me, said Jesus. That call in and of itself is not so unusual. Lots of rabbis had followers. People who would literally follow them around, learning their teachings, learning their philosophies, learning their way of life. The students would emulate their teacher and then carry on for them after they died. But you see, that's the thing. They died. And so when Jesus said to Simon and Andrew, to James and to John that day, follow me, that call was nothing unusual. But what was unusual was where Jesus was going and where he was calling them to follow him to the cross. No doubt they would hear lots of teaching on the way. They would see amazing things. Jesus healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, casting out demons, even raising the dead. They would see him challenged and they would see him challenging the misbeliefs and the lives of others. But none of that was what Jesus was really all about. Jesus was about the cross. He would lay down his life there and he would lay it down for the world. So Jesus' call was not primarily a new teaching or a new philosophy or a new way of life. In fact, Jesus' teaching was ancient, what had already been given in the Old Testament. And he wanted them to see that he was fulfilling it but Jesus' call was really not about his disciples emulating him or imitating him, of seeing him as some type of example of what they ought to be doing. For what Jesus came to do, he came to do for us in our place and as our substitute. And so while Jesus' call was in itself not so unusual, it was definitely different. What Jesus wanted his followers to see and to learn was the kingdom of God is at hand. For in Jesus, God had come to earth to establish his kingdom. And that being a kingdom of life, eternal life. And so their message would be repent and believe in the gospel that task was not to imitate Jesus in his life or in his death, but to point to him as the one who did all of that for us. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. As the one who did what no other teacher was willing to do or could do, or no other philosophy or philosopher could do or is willing to do, Jesus did. He conquered death, for this is why he came. Other rabbis lived and they died. But Jesus came to die and then live. The 12 would be sent out to preach that very fact that in Jesus there is life. And so repent, turn from following the teachings and philosophies and ways of life that lead unto death and believe in the gospel that in Jesus there is life, for in Jesus there is the forgiveness of sins. You see, that's the thing we sometimes forget, that death is sin made visible. Death is horrible, death is grisly, death is sad, death is separation, because sin created all of those things. We die because sin robs us of life. We were not created to die. We were created to be eternal. Sin and death are robbers of life. And so if death is to be defeated, then sin must be defeated too. That's why science will never be able to defeat death. Oh, they may be able to prolong life and extend it. But the only one who defeats sin can defeat death also. And that's what Jesus came to do. And so Jesus is not just another rabbi teaching a philosophy or a way of life. 
It's not just a matter of you have your rabbi and I have mine, which so many people think of today, that Jesus is just many teachers or one of the many gurus out there. And it's just a matter of following an example. And if it were just a matter of following an example, then it would be true. But to follow Jesus, you must follow him to the cross. It is to see there your sin and death is put upon the innocent one who deserves no death. It is there to see your substitute who has come to pay the price for you. It is there to see how great God's love is for you. And that's how the kingdom of God is at hand, how God is establishing his kingdom on earth through the forgiveness of sins. There's no other way out of death to life. And so Simon and Andrew, James and John, they followed Jesus. They had no idea what they were in for. They would see the undreamed of. They would hear teaching with authority, not of this earth. And they would become convinced that Jesus of Nazareth is God in the flesh. And then they will see their God die for his creation. The sin of the world counted against him on the cross and the price paid in full once for all. Then no longer would death and life, or no longer would life end in death, but life would end death. And when Jesus rose from the dead, that's exactly what we see, a life that ended death. Follow me, Jesus says. And see this. Follow me and hear that I forgive you all your sins, your grisly, your horrible, your unthinkable sins. I know them all, Jesus says, for I took them upon myself on the cross. I was declared guilty for you so that you might be declared not guilty because of me. And so follow me and no longer die a death that ends your life, but receive a life that will end your death. That is the message of this Sunday. In fact, that is the same message we preach every Sunday, that where Jesus is, there is life. For in Jesus, there is forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness that we need. And so to you and to all, the message of this Sunday is, Welcome, welcome here with the rest of us sinners, with the rest of us who have followed the wrong path. Welcome and receive the washing of Jesus' forgiveness for your sins, for all your sins, whatever those sins may be and how large they may be. There is no sin too big for God. If there were, you could be sure God wouldn't have sent Jonah to Nineveh. Nineveh, that capital of Assyria. And the Assyrians were some of the meanest, vilest, crankiest, treacherous, evilest people you ever could meet. That's why Jonah didn't want to go. But God would not let him not go. For even them, Jesus died for their sin that they might live. And so it is for you. For every life is valuable to God, whether you live in a house or in a womb, whether you're up and walking around or confined to a wheelchair, whether you are out making a name for yourself or whether you're no longer able to remember anyone's name, whether you're from Israel or Nineveh or even the United States, you are valuable to God. You may not be valuable to anyone else, but you are to God. You are worth the life of his son who died that you may live. Jesus called Simon, Andrew, and James, and John to follow him to see that, to follow him to the cross and see him die for the sins of the world. 
and to rise for the life of the world. And then to proclaim that message to the world that all people may see and know and receive life. A life that starts even now as Jesus and his life live in you. As you receive his word of forgiveness or as often and every time you receive the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for nourishment and for strength. That as you follow him, he may live in you and you in him. And so you now bring his life and his love to others, speaking for those who cannot speak for themselves, defending the defenseless, the least among us, proclaiming life and proclaiming his message of victory over death. He is our hope in the midst of our despair. He is our love and the love for all who are vulnerable. He is our strength and our weakness. And he allows good to come from our suffering. God will give you opportunities. He will work through you. Follow me, Jesus says, and he will do the rest. And he has. And that's the bottom line. He is the Lord of life. Repent and believe in him. For in Jesus, all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' holy name, amen and amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen.